Hey guys, and we are back. Yes, and we are back with uh, our next session, which is PWAs, mm -hmm. Beyond the Service Worker. I love that title. Uh, this is going oh, to be presented you. by Cedric. Um, Cedric is actually um, a freelancer. He's a mentor. He's a speaker. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> so, a friend um, of mine, too. I uh, stopped stealing with friends. That. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and bring Cédric in and ask him who he's friends with. <laughs> hey, Cédric. Hey, Cédric. Hey, guys. So, who's your best friend? Best friend? Everyone. Let's not start here. We both go off heartbroken. Yes. <laughs> we you can my get that right. Why? <laughs> How are you doing, Cédric? Feeling good? I love your chair, by the way. It looks Thanks. very gimme. <laughs> it's awesome. It looks you love, so. You're cool. my friend, but you love my chair, not me. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna retract that. Game is actually a word in English. It means bad in a way. So now, it looks game -er, gamer gamer. All right, uh, <laughs> Cedric, tell us a bit about yourself. You have an impressive journey as well. Um, I know about it, but Marin doesn't because she's not your friend. So, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Cedric. Well, yeah, so, so maybe maybe I can start, I can like introduce myself. So currently I'm a front-end consultant and coach, not really a freelancer per se now. So I'm a JavaScript consultant at the Red Pandas. Mm. Um, they're an IT company that builds systems for other companies and they are transitioning to a new name. Uh, they're transitioning to the name Launch Ventures. So they're now mm. present on three continents, <clears throat> four countries. So, Yiddush, what do I do there? Well, it depends on the needs of uh, a team at a given point in time. So, tasks such as writing front end code, UJS, JavaScript, and, and everything. I also advise them on decision for future front-end implementations. Then I guide the young team members through their front-end tasks. So I try to help them without giving them uh, some straight answers yeah. so that they can go through the thinking process and actually make progress through, through their career. Yeah, they develop yeah. the logic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah not give them the, the whole answer, but still keep them, uh, trying to guide them a little bit so that they're not completely lost. You get the yeah. idea. So you are, you are a consultant, a, a mentor and a coach. That's awesome, man. Um, all jokes aside about me and Marin right now, <laughs> we are keep both mentor to just say. <laughs> We are both rooting for your session. It's going to be awesome. I'm really into PWAs. I've mentioned that before. I'm going to say it again. And uh, I'm going to keep an eye on your slides and on your session myself. So, I'm going to um, learn too. Yeah, By the end of yeah. the session, I'm going to know what PWA means. See, we, okay, we are all rooting for Marin. All right, Cedric. Okay, so um, we leave you to it. Uh, have fun. Yep. And to the viewers, feedback, comments, questions in the live chat. We are here. All right. Floor is yours. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. So to recap about um, Launch Ventures and what I do there, uh, recently, most of my time is uh, with regards to leading the, the team and coordinating the work between the business team and the development team. On the community side, I am a member of Front Encoders, so we host online meetups since the pandemic, and we're hoping to be back with in-person meetings this year. I'm also a member of the MSCC organizing this event. You have Vidush, you have Marin, and other, other members of the organizing team, so great job, guys. Thanks for, for this event. And then I'm also a member of GDG Mauritius, which is related to Google Activities. If you haven't done yet, join us. It's even more fun for the whole tech year. So PWA is beyond the service workers. PWA stands for Progressive Web Apps. And 
Generally, when we mention PWAs, we often mention a service worker, offline caching, and that's really about it. Together, we'll see what is the status quo of PWAs and how we can do more for our apps than just making them work offline. So Marine, PWAs, Progressive Web Apps. A PWA is often referred to, as mentioned, as an app that has a service worker that is installable on your mobile phone or on your laptop or desktop, and that works offline. Working offline. So let's have a look at web.dev. Web.dev, which is a PWA. At first sight, it's just a simple web application. Nothing specific here, but if we go offline and refresh, we can see that the page that we visited before is still available, although the network requests are failing. This is the first, they work offline. And by working offline, if you visit an another page that hasn't visit, been visited before when you had the internet connection, you get this fallback offline. No connection, you will get your content when you're back online. This is what we expect of native apps, be it on your desktop or on your mobile. And this is something we can provide with PWAs. Reminder, this is a web app. Generally, you would just expect to play the dinosaur game here. So that's the, the drawback of progressive. We don't have access to the dinosaur game anymore. Shame, really. So let's see. Um, so we saw the cached existing content. We saw the fallback. But PWA is also an app that is installable. So let's go back to the home page. Let's close the dev tools and look at this plus here. Some developers will make it trigger automatically so that you have this pop up right away. Some choose not to and give you the liberty to go for it manually. But the idea is the same. You can click on install here and the app is now an app on your system. Sorry about that. So this is the app and this is the old browser. If I close it, web.dev, you can see that it's a first class citizen now in my operating system. It's an installed app. So that's for the status quo. And these are what I call installable web apps. They can be installed and they work offline. They are considered PWAs, but again, we'll see later that this is really not enough to be into the philosophy of PWAs. So, <clears throat> so for now, let's see what we need on the technical side to be a PWA. Quick recap, you need the manifest.json file where you can declare the name, the icon sets, and importantly, the start URL. When you have a native app, you generally have the same screen that opens each time you open the app. With a PWA, when it's installed, we can specify that same screen or route actually in a web app. And you do that with the start URL. Generally, we want to point to the um, to the home route, right? Okay. This is a declarative file, but it's really important to have it right. If it's invalid, you won't even get get the prompt to try to install the app. Just won't trigger. The other file that is needed is our service worker. It is a proxy between your front end code, so your SPA or your multi page application, doesn't matter, 
between that code and the network. There, in the service worker, you have access to very low-level APIs. You have access to the lifecycle of the service worker itself, and you have access to the cache API, which is helpful for storing static files for, for your web apps. But you know, dealing with low-level APIs directly often requires a lot of boilerplate code, takes a lot of time to provide basic results, and is really often error code. So it's just counterproductive to go ahead and write code for low-level APIs each time. And as with other low-level APIs, such as the DOM API, smart people develop tools for other developers to focus on more end-users features. Workbox is one tool that we can use to handle those patterns in the service worker. On the screen, you can see we have two lines where we are directly using the API from Workbox. And then on the last piece of code, it's we still have access to the native API for the service worker. Right, get those two files configured properly. And you can replicate the behavior that you can have a fallback content for when you're offline and the content is not available. And you can have visited content that is cached and available again, even when your users are offline. And with that, your system works offline and you have healed the dinosaur. Yet, PWA should do more, and of course we can. More than just working offline. The progressive in progressive web app is about progressively improving our products across devices, where we can take advantage of the higher power that we have on desktops or native APIs that we get access to on mobiles. And also through time, we can take advantage of new features being released. Um, yeah, new features being released to improve on the existing user experience. We'll see about that in a minute. So bottom line, it comes down to the best user experience possible on each device at any point in time. Make your users happier and improve your results. So how do we do that? Well, there are features that are specific to installed web apps. This is where we see the link between being technically a PWA and applying the philosophy of progressive web apps. Two APIs that require a service worker to, to work are the push API. This is the API where your server can directly send messages to the front end code. You can use it to create more engaging user experience, for example, when you combine it with the notification API. Um, then, then we have the web share target API for receiving data and even files sometimes. Use it to have a more integrated experience, integrated with the OS, I mean. So there we see that the number of reasons for building uh, native apps versus PWAs is getting smaller each time the web platforms gets a new feature. So let's have a look at a pet project, project that we will use as a base to demonstrate the progressive improvement on an installable web app. So self-chat, what is it? To be honest, I'm a person who has been dealing for years with mental health challenges, including anxiety and depression. And in those moments, you get too many thoughts in your head. You, you want to dump them. And unfortunately, you don't always have access to a notebook, for example, which could help. But what I have with me all the time is my phone. And I admit way too often I would chat. This is something quick 
instant, but free doesn't help me with, with the issue. What generally helps is journaling, which is a pretty effective way at handling those four patterns. It allows me to visualize those thoughts, and from there I can take action and, and course correct. Thing is, journaling can take some time once started, and as mentioned, it's not always uh, reachable, accessible, and at any time where the thought pops up. Some, if not most, of these thoughts are, are brief, and a quick note would, would help, really. So I really needed something instant. Hence the idea of building a chat to yourself system, really. I know the idea, the idea is kind of crazy, but hence the name, self-chat, basically chat to yourself. What does it give on the technical side? Well, I'm a developer, so by definition, I'm lazy. I'm a front-end developer, so I know a little about back-end development. Combine the two and I decided that, nope, no backend for me and, and for self chat. And also, generally in chat systems, we have web sockets in use, but I don't have a backend and I don't need for instant communication. Well, at least not over the wire. So, web sockets, that's a nope as well. That is not to say that for self chat or for a PWA, um, there's little work involved. Snapchat is an app, an app that works on your phone, on your desktop, that's meant to work as a native app in many of its behaviors. So it needs to work offline, especially for dynamic content, because it's all based on dynamic content. So for that, I use IndexedDB as a local database. You can do the parallel between IndexedDB for the web and, say, SQLite for Android development. So we have storage on the cloud and we have storage locally. That's the first difference between just a usual website and a PWA generally. For most of the processing involved, we offload, offload the work to web workers. And I still wanted data to be stored in the cloud. So I already had this plugin, Vue API, that helps you to connect Google APIs for the front end with your Vue.js app. So I decided to use that as my quote unquote backend and database. So Google Sheets as backend. You can see already that. It's not just revolving about uh, around the manifest JSON file and the service worker. This is the starting point, but there are lots of decisions and a lot of tech that we can choose to, to add in, in our apps. Just a quick slide about Google Sheets as backend, because I just think it's really cool. So I'm using Google Sheets to store the user's data. As the developer for Snapchat, I never see your data. I never have access to your own data. The user has full ownership because the data is sent to a sheet on the user's account. And from there, you can do all the analysis that you want. Snapchat is implementing some graphing and some uh, trend analysis but you are free to do whatever you want with, with your data. And I think that's pretty cool in general to have an app that gives the user full and easy access to, to their data. So let's have a very brief demo of self-chat. As you can see, it's installed on the, on the computer. So it's starting up. I've already tried some messages there. And it's a work in progress. It's being refactored, so some things are broken. Sorry about that. Dev gone. If I can type, yes, awesome. 
hit enter. And here what happens is that the message is stored locally and also sent to the spreadsheet. So that was a brief demo about self-chat. You get the idea. So thoughts also include something else than just what's on my mind, what's happening uh, personally or things like that. It can happen that I encounter some content online and I want to, to store that because I want to write something about it as well, like a quick note. This is how recent APIs can, can help us improve on, on our apps. We mentioned earlier the, the web share target API. Well, let's see how we need to, to implement it first, and then we'll see a, a demo of how it works with self chat. So in this article from web.dev again, we get the essentials that we need to implement the Web Share Target API for a PWA. So you will need to have your manifest JSON file, obviously. What you do is to you add a new property to the JSON file, and this property holds an object with three uh, properties itself. So action, action relates to the path on your app, the route on your app that will handle the Receival of the the content. This is a bit similar to to a form. You will see. So you configure a form. You use, for example, the the get method again. So this shows you that the content will be sent through the URL. So you might have like a query string of the shared target with those three parameters: title, text, and URL. So if you want them in the query string to hold a different name, you can just rename the value on the right. So with that added to your manifest.json file, configured properly, when you use um, the web share target API on the device, you will receive the content in the URL and you just have to decode that and uh, use it in your app. So let's close that and let's get to the demo. To avoid any issues, I am using the uh, a recorded video here. So what we do in this video is from the MSCC channel on YouTube, we are going to share uh, the content, not to a native app like Messenger or Instagram, things like that we're going to share it to self-chat and self-chat is going to receive the information and use it and prepare a chat message. So here, I'm going to share and I look for self-chat. I clicked on self-chat and self-chat is opening. And let me, yeah, I post here. So this is the content, the text that we get when we want to share, um, when we want to share video from YouTube to another app, and SelfChat just received it as if SelfChat SelfChat was a native app. So I play now. I'm gonna select category because that's how SelfChat works. That, and we can add some more info about it. Just sharing my thoughts. Of course, DevCon is awesome. And I hit send. What's there? We hit send and voila, we just have content that was shared from a native app to a progressive web app. And this sounds like a small addition, but this is really powerful in the context of self chat itself. So there are other APIs, find out what they are, which APIs there are out there, and try to see if it matches your context. 
at least for me as my personal <laughs> end user, it really helped me throughout the day. Continuing on the philosophy of progressive web apps, here's a slide about improvements. We saw a quick demo on a pet project, but we can still think that we could, for example, render the content when the message is sent, like take the OG image from the link and, and render it, make links clickable, for example. Always see if you can improve your app when you want to say that your app is a progressive web app. So we saw a cool feature that we can add to our apps to, to have a, a better user experience, but there, there are things that we have to do. Some things that we have to do to provide a smooth user experience. Remember that we are kind of competing as web developers writing PWAs with native web apps. Doesn't have to be all sorts of fancy native apps, but some business classic um, native apps have good performances out of the box generally. And there are techniques, there are approaches for us to apply to improve the base experience that we provide throughout the, the web technologies. So how? Well, there are a lot of good best practices that we, we can apply here. We can improve on the load time. We can load only what's necessary and then load the rest on demand. We can check the bundle size. We can make use of code splitting and in some cases, we can prefetch some code if the user has a cheap and fast internet connection. That works. If you want more in-depth content for around this topic, I would recommend the talk from Wednesday from um, Stefan Nikolic. The title of the talk is It's Too Big. It says it's all. Go check it out. Then we can also improve on the psychology of the users, on the perceived performance, perceived response time. We can keep the refresh rate high to have the same experience that native apps provide. We can use call, uh, function calls such as request animation frame, for example, which will take the responsibility of finding the best timing in terms of milliseconds for as to when to play your, your animation. You can use approaches like fading fast on network requests. Let's say you have a request that's supposed to take like five seconds maximum and it's already taking like 10, 15 seconds. You can stop it, cancel it and even try again automatically. Or you can let the user know this request failed. Do you want to try again? These kind of approaches um, are, are possible. And then you can use web workers where appropriate to offload some work to other, other friends. For example, the AMP framework forces you to write JavaScript code inside workers. The code just runs there, not on, on the main thread. So for this talk, let's focus on smoother UX with web workers. Yes, another episode about web workers. Two years ago, I did a whole talk about web workers. So I will recap the basic ideas for those who are new to the topic and for others, I will try to tell you what's new, at least according to me, in terms of web workers. The idea of web workers is to offload the JavaScript work to other threads. I'm oversimplifying here, but the idea is there. Basically, in general, you have your, your tab, your browser tab, which has one thread. This thread is responsible for rendering the HTML and CSS. And on top of that, running the JavaScript code. So if the JavaScript code is too intense to, to run or takes too long, your UI is not fluid anymore. You're using losing frames, etc. It's junky. 
So not fluid UI, bad user experience, obviously. One approach, one solution to this problem is to offload the work to other friends, web workers. They have no access to the DOM and other APIs, and they have no context whatsoever on, about what's going on on the main thread in terms of JavaScript or anything. So these two worlds communicate through messages and events. So that's the theory, that's the idea between uh, about how main thread and works with web workers. So what's new? Well, kind of web workers in, in production. And when I say production, I really mean Webpack. I have tested two libraries that work with Webpack for my use case. They might work with um, other bundlers, but I cannot confirm that at this time. So the first one that I use and which I use the most is Comlink. Comlink, let's see what it is about. Let's see the documentation on GitHub. So it's a very, very small uh, library that helps you deal with web workers in a much more modern way. Instead of using messages, which are kind of an event-based API that no one likes in modern front-end development, at least, we get uh, a promise-based API. So here's the idea. You have your main.js file, which is we can be any code that runs on, on the main thread, really. It could be your Vue.js code, React, Angular, or just pure JavaScript, like here. And then when you work with web workers, you need a separate file, hence the worker.js on the right. So here's what we do. We create an instance of the worker on line four, and we wrap it using the, the comlink API with the wrap method. Then we have a class that we can instantiate, and voila, on line 12, you have access to sort of a proxy between your main thread and the worker thread. On the right side, API is even simpler. You declare a class and give it some methods, and you expose it with comlink.expose, you pass it the reference to the class, and this is how on line 12, we can use instance.log something, and it just works. Note that every time we work with web workers, those APIs are going to be asynchronous no matter what. Um, so having a promise-based API where on top of that we can use a sync await is really nice nowadays. Right. So comlink in self chat. Well, I use comlink to manage most of the, the processing done inside self chat. For example, I process the, the list of messages to see if there are audio messages in there or not, to process each um, audio files, to do the network requests. I know it can be seen as sometimes overkill, but yeah, the idea was to free the main thread as much as possible. The only use case where it doesn't work for me is with IndexedDB. Hence, the use of the next library, which is Promise Worker. So let's have a quick glance at the API there. So it's even smaller than, um, than Comlink, as you can see. And the idea is very, very similar. You need to create your own web worker and then wrap it, and then you get a promise-based API again. Post message is similar to the post message we will use directly on a web worker. It's just that they, they decided to keep this, this API. So don't, don't get confused here. It is uh, a promise-based API if you use promise worker. And inside the worker, we couldn't be more straightforward into a point than this, you use the method register promise worker, 
give it a callback and inside the callback you have all the, the features that, that you need. So Promise Worker, again, it's used in self-chat for handling exclusively indexed DB. Two small libraries, they work well with um, Webpack and I'm serving it to an external URL and it's working fine for me. So I would say you can try web workers in production now. So that was about it for, for this talk. I'm sure there will be some questions. So to recap, we can make use of new APIs where it makes sense for your use case to improve on the already existing user experience. And also we can apply existing techniques to provide a smoother user experience to um, all your user base. So that was it for me. Thank you for your time. And now I am open to questions. Hey, are we back? Oh, we are yes, back. we are back. <laughs> <laughs> Cedric, thank Open you for this great meeting. session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there is one question. It's it's um, it's the one that a lot of people are asking. Um, Marin, what's a PWA? Progressive Web App. Ha! All right, all right. She, <laughs> <laughs> she got. See, you're a great coach, Cedric. <laughs> it's really good. It was really so, interesting, and I love the serve chat thing. So. Actually, we are getting um, we are getting a lot of uh, positive feedback as well in the live chat um, from Clarice. That was an epic talk. Um, she also mentioned that she uses Delio um, for mood tracking and journaling. Actually, just sharing. Um, all right. Now, one question and uh, one real question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you think about Apple and their relationship with PWAs? Uh, is it, does it have, like, does it have the same amount of support? How does PWA work on, on Apple devices? Is it a good experience? Um, have you tried it personally? I'm guilty of not really focusing on Apple devices, especially not on, on Safari for PWAs. Um, so, I have to say that most of the time I've been working on PWAs, it was for pet projects. Unfortunately, ah. I don't get access to a great demand for uh, clients willing to develop PWAs. That's well, true. about Apple, I think they did good progress. We should give that to them. But they are still, I, th I would say they're still struggling internally about do we okay. give up? on the our app store world garden mm. or, do we, <laughs> or do we avoid to become the the new ie really with yeah. safari in general so i would say there's hope there let's see let's see how it evolves mm. Mm -hmm. i'm confident yeah. they will improve but i don't know how fast they will <laughs> i should remind everyone that for the first iphone they were using web apps, actually, if I recall well. It's only as from the second iPhone that we had the the, the app store and native mm. apps on, on the device. I did not know that. I've mm. Then again, I've not really worked with Apple from the start. I mean, I got, <laughs> I got into Apple development quite recently when started working cross-platform. So, um, yeah, actually... We uh, say we generally have to, to support all of those devices, but the reality is it depends on what your client needs, what's the budget, yeah. what's the time frame. You can't do all with just what you have sometimes. Yeah, true. Actually, the thing is that um, if I remember correctly, it's around iOS 12 or 11, Apple added support for PWAs, and um, it's true that I, I guess this question is coming from um, from the point of view that actually Apple it does support PWA, but um, its implementation of it was somewhat um, conservative, a bit restrained compared to something like Chrome or, or Edge. Um, of course, that does not mean that PWAs don't work on iOS, and 
since we are talking about PWA and um, Apple, um, the, 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 the fact that you are developing a PWA is you are pretty sure it's gonna, the look is going to be the same on the devices and so on. Um, it's, it's, it's basically a website that you're you know, making it a, a web app, progressive web app. So um, yeah, it, it's often the case that you won't really go that deep into each platform, like if you were developing a native application. Um, so yeah, actually PWA, it, it works on iOS, but if I remember correctly, it's pretty restrained. I think there's um there's a limit on service worker cache or something like that. Uh, but I don't know if it's been improved. So that's probably where the <laughs> the question is coming from. Um, Sandeep, if I'm right, just send a thumbs up in the chat. <laughs> um, so we've got some comments from Mike Geiser. Um, PWA is a wide spectrum of capabilities, though. Um, so WebKit does and will support some of those. Yeah, that's 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 true. There are others that they may just never support, like Web Push. But newer APIs are trickling through. Yeah, it's like it's like every technology. Um, I think Mike, where you start when you start, there's always some kind of resistance, right, Cedric? <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, I think I think we lost. Ah, Sandeep sent the thumbs up. So I was right. <laughs> That's where the question was coming from. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's like all the technologies, right? The support comes slowly and gradually. And I mean, Apple isn't known for adapting too quickly. <laughs> Apple uh, is, uh, yeah. Yeah, Apple is uh, like a special kid in, in <laughs> like they, they have, uh, they are really focused on security. If we want to talk about the, the good aspect. Yeah. But they, they were always like the, the different kid on, on the playground. But more generally, with features that we want to have on, on the web platform, it's mostly the responsibility of developers. But unfortunately, that comes to the acceptance of the business as well. So the responsibility of implementing those emerging APIs on our web apps to show the browser vendors that we want this and we want more of it as well. Yeah, so if you true. just don't use and wait for everything to be ready, there's just a big chance anything. that the whole industry gonna is going to miss out on this. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. It's I think someone else in another session mentioned this, um, <clears throat> not in our track, but I think that was Ish in a podcast um, on the first day mm. that we are the consumers. We basically, knowingly or unknowingly, we define what gets adopted and what does not. So we basically, we, we push them to do things and not. So it's, it, it depends on us a bit. Um, so um, there is one final question. Uh, is your wallpaper, you know, in the background there, the same, um, your, um, your wallpaper on your on your laptop the same as that one yeah. in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah. That's a that's a mystery solved. <laughs> and I I guess we can now wrap up this session. It was really awesome. This conversation about Apple and, and support and so on and how things move on. This is an ongoing conversation. I'm sure we're gonna pick we are gonna pick this up another time in another session. Um so Cedric, any final words to the um, to the viewers right now? Anything you want to say? Closing notes. Go try out PWAs. Try the experimental APIs, and as always, try to give the best user experience to all the your user base. Yes, customer is king. User is king. Yeah. All right. <laughs> With that in mind, um, Cedric, it was wonderful to have you on here. Um, great session thank as always. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Great for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye, Cedric. Thank you, guys. Everyone. Bye.